Have you ever thought about the possibility that we might be living in a simulation, and that our entire life is a computer game created by an unknown creator? It sounds insane, but what happens to us practically every day, and what we have grown accustomed to considering a simple coincidence, or a strange turn of events is no less insane. This is the Fudge Network, and in this episode, you will learn about the crazy coincidences that prove that we are living in a simulation. Michael Jackson, is a pop performer known to everyone today. He made an undeniable contribution to the development of culture and left a bright mark in history. Sometimes I wonder if he was even from our planet? It feels like Jackson was special. And, oddly enough, there are some findings that confirm the mystical origin of the artist. For example, this ancient bust, which for a long time did not attract any attention. But after the performer passed away, people noticed this work of art and began to draw analogies. It turned out that someone had created an exact copy of Michael Jackson long time ago. People immediately began to come up with strange theories. According to one version, Jackson was reincarnated. According to another, he had visited this museum long ago and was so impressed by the sculpture that he decided to undergo plastic surgery. Of course, all of these versions sound extremely exotic. It's difficult to believe in such a coincidence, isn't it? Lightning strikes often become covers for videos on YouTube. People are interested in watching how the same lightning strikes several times in the same place in a row. This is a huge rarity. Sometimes lightning strikes a person several times in a row, but the man who will be mentioned does not compare in any way. His name is Walter Summerford, he was an officer in Britain. It was during his service that he was first struck by lightning. Part of his body was paralyzed, he tried to cure himself, but all his attempts were in vain. In the end, the man moved to Vancouver, where he finally left the service and simply engaged in his favorite activities. Two years have passed since the lightning strike, and on an unlucky day, it struck him again. This time he was sitting under a tree, and the lightning struck another part of his body, paralyzing him. Two years later, Mr. Summerford learned to walk again and could even take walks to the nearest park. But in 1930, lightning struck him again, and this time it was fatal. What is surprising is that the story with this man and lightning did not end there. Four years after his funeral, lightning came to visit his beloved friend. This time, greeting him over the tombstone. Martin de Jong, if you see him among the passengers on your flight, you can relax. Nothing bad will happen to you for sure. He is an ordinary cyclist who loves racing and sports. He has been involved in bicycle racing for a long time and constantly participates in various tournaments. When Martin heard about the tour of Taiwan, he decided to go there and began choosing flights. The first flight was more convenient because it was non-stop and arrived 50 minutes earlier, but the second one was cheaper. In the end, he chose the second flight, saving money. But then came the shock, the first flight that Martin was considering, disappeared without a trace, and presumably, all the people on board died. Over time, Martin forgot about this incident. He was invited to another city for filming under a contract. And he faced the choice again, expensive or cheap airline. And this time he chose the cheap flight, saving about $700. But it turned out that the first flight, which he refused, crashed. This is an amazing and real case that shows that sometimes saving money can be successful. But let's return to the question of simulation. This question was also posed by the Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom. And he conducted some very interesting research that you will be interested to hear about. Almost every person has asked themselves about the origin of the universe and the world in which we live, regardless of their profession. How did life arise? Who thought it all up? Is there higher beings? Blah 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 and so on. After all, the longer people explore the planet and the world as a whole, the more they are convinced that all of this could not have simply arisen on its own. Obviously, someone must be behind it, because such a mechanism is too perfect to be caused by a random explosion or something else. But as you may have guessed, we will now talk about no less interesting theory, the one that is called the theory of computer simulation. Of course, at first everything may seem very strange and incomprehensible, but in reality, the deeper you delve into this topic, the more it begins to resemble reality. Yes, this theory suggests that humans are affected by some kind of simulation, most likely computerized, in order to make the illusion perfect, the simulation takes into account the organism that it wraps around its finger. 
it adjusts to the perception of the person's environment, shapes their mind, and even consciousness. You may have seen an example of this theory in the movie The Matrix. Nick Bostrom asks curious questions, such as if this simulation exists, then what is the real world like? But if such a world really exists, where is it located? After all, it is possible that that world too will be a kind of simulation, and there will be a whole bunch of such layers. Are computers capable of creating our world so realistic that we believe we are in reality, not in some kind of game? But then where is this program stored? What is this supercomputer made of, and are we ourselves and the people around us real? So many questions and so few answers. Nevertheless, there are some guesses that Nick operates with. For example, he sees the illusion of independence in people. People think they have the right to vote, the ability to make decisions, but according to Nick, this is an illusion. The brain has been designed in such a way that it looks very realistic to people. As if we really feel smells, empathize, feel pain. This distinguishes people from robots. However, as scientists know, if the correct set of computational structures and processes is installed in the system, conscious experiences can arise in it. This explains a lot. Roughly speaking, if we humans cannot currently create a machine with feelings and consciousness, it is quite possible that other humans will achieve this in a few generations. Because of this, Nick has come to a new conclusion. Either we are already in a simulation and are living computers in ourselves, or we will have to master this technology in a few decades, and then people will enter the post-human era and create many virtual realities. By the way, regarding the era of post-humanity, the mature phase of technological development will make it possible to turn planets and other astronomical resources into computers of colossal power, asserts Bostrom. We don't have to look far, let's remember our own computers and virtual realities. After all, people somehow drew and created a world inside a box, in which other players can interact. This has probably already happened to us as well. Someone invented humanity, and now we are like game characters dancing, sunbathing, and partying, not understanding what is happening. People control their characters, which have their own facial expressions, emotions, and personalities. But where is the guarantee that no one is also controlling us? After all, all these weather effects and disasters could be the actions of one of the players. As we gain more experience in creating virtual reality, we will achieve a better understanding of the computational requirements necessary to make such measures look realistic to their visitors. It is also quite possible that the creators of our world have already figured out how to do this, and that is why we do not understand anything and do not even suspect it. And even if we try to do something, the system will quickly block any reverse moves and force the person to change their opinion. Probably, our thoughts are edited by the creator, who periodically filters out what he does not like in us. Thus, based on this theory, Nick came to several conclusions. Firstly, we already live in a simulation, and our descendants are trying to create new simulations or other intelligent civilizations have already done so. Secondly, no one is interested in creating a simulation, and in general, reality is the only true one. Thirdly, we live in a simulation, but its creation is beyond anyone's ability to comprehend, and anyone, who tries to hack it, will be doomed. What do you think about this? Do we live in a simulation or not? Don't forget to like the video if you found it interesting, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell to always be aware of new videos, and of course, leave your comments under this video.